Hello friends, welcome back to product and brand management. Now after having a discussion on largely all the possible fundamentals, I should not say you know all the fundamentals because this art and this science is actually you know and I am uh, calling it both. So, so because there are scientific procedures associated with product and brand management and up till now you have actually realized that this is an art. So, this is ever evolving and then it is you know continuously being worked upon by several researchers who are working upon this subject through different kinds of dimensions. Because in this competitive environment where in science is enabling uh, everything, the way we live, the way we behave, the way we communicate. So, everything is you know changing and the pace is very rapid. You see if you will just look into uh, uh, you know uh, a decadal kind of a change which we have been going through, uh, incidentally we are passing through 2021 starting from 2011 this decade then 2001 to 2011 you just start marking that with a very simple kind of an analytical perspective let us say the kind of products and I am not talking of brands the kind of products let us say the communication devices and then you would realize that it is a huge change which has uh, you know come up. Uh, let us say from 1990 to 2001, 2001 to 2011 and subsequently last three decades only in one product category in communication devices you would find a humongous change. For example, if you will look at a computer uh, in 1990 uh, you know let us say 4, 5, 6 there you had uh, you know uh, this, this disk operated systems. And, and then today you have sophisticated laptops or you know all in one units and then uh, there are different kinds of weights and you have you have lightweight laptops and so on. So, so everything has changed in, in, uh, if, in that perspective and I was referring to communication devices. Uh, you see pager business was so prominent in 1995-96 and you see there were several paging companies you know enabling paging basically. So, so uh, uh, you know most of the people used to proudly carry a, a pager along with their you know belts here basically and then they used to pick out the pager and look at the message which has come up. For example, a number is flashing and then uh, someone goes to a phone nearby and then you know calls back. So, so it, it was you know kind of uh, a very enabling kind of a situation wherein you could get in touch with someone. Then messages started coming you know on on pagers you know contact immediately on this number do this do that go there and it, it, it was it was uh, you know very very uh, happy kind of a thing basically because because communication initiated in a different kind of a mode uh, otherwise you had to think of you had to note down numbers in the diaries you had to note down digital diaries were also there those kind of things were there and suddenly within those 25, 24 years look at your smartphone now everything has changed and this is you know what we term as market planning, product planning and so on. Someone was planning about today's smartphones let us say almost 5 or 6 years back. Someone would, someone, someone would have known that what kind of changes were coming. Someone definitely would have uh, planned for what kind of uh, you know uh, communication changes would come, what kind of behavioral change because of that communication would come, someone would, would have been thinking and people still are thinking that way. This is what you call market and product planning in, in totality and I will be taking you through this with several examples, lots of examples and I will keep urging you you know that go to past three decades uh, as I have just briefly demonstrated communication devices changes in front of you. You can you can think in uh, terms of automotives and once EVs would come in full force people would again start saying that an era has changed. Then entertainment, entertainment industry the kind of movies 
Today, India is a fan of Amazon Prime, Netflix, Disney Hotstar, and so on. You know, so many uh, venues are there. And, and uh, let's say three years or four years back, still people are going to, uh, you know, multiplexes to watch movies. But but again, it has changed. There was a time in between when, you know, large screen televisions were not so preferred. People were focusing on individual screens. Now, because of this uh, change, which we are uh, you know, having through this kind of, uh, you know, services available, people again are, are going for drawing room television viewing. And, and then you would have noticed that an integrated change in terms of software, that is uh, the uh, shows, the, the uh, you know, soaps, the serials which are coming. So, so that has also taken uh, a change in terms of now people are producing more family oriented stories in terms of, uh, you know, these kind of shows. So, so you see everything is getting integrated in terms of in, uh, entertainment uh, now and then and again it is taking a different kind of a shape. Just start developing a trajectory of that and you will, you know, uh, develop more interest in the subject what we are talking of. So, let us go ahead with as far as market and pro product planning uh, segment goes. You see market planning, it is an interesting thing actually and, and I have marked specific areas as red to highlight few elements in market planning for you. You see a marketing plan is a written document containing the guidelines for the business centers, marketing programs and allocations over the planning period. And, and you see this can vary, this is not necessarily, uh, necessarily an annual plan. This can vary because, because you see you can uh, create sub uh, plans for, for uh, annual perspective also. As I said, someone was thinking in terms of a uh, huge influx of smartphone devices or those kind of things uh, with larger companies and, and we know all their names. So, but the basic ingredient or fundamental element of marketing plan is objective, objective of marketing plan. You know, what do we intend to do? Why do we focus so much on this kind of a thing and why it is so interesting and you see it is a sort of a guidebook. It, it, is, it is a very important, you know, step by step sequence of what should be done, definitely with, with lots of analysis and reanalysis uh, along the way. But, but this is largely a guide, wherein the objectives are to define the current situation. And when I say current situation, it is not just a simple thing. You have to look into the stage where do you stand as a business, where uh, your product stands. And if you are a multi-product organization, then definitely you have to plot those products one by one on a life cycle graph. And, and if I am talking of, uh, you know, let us say uh, a very large consumer products organization, then definitely they have to think in terms of so many product life cycles. Although one product manager usually is allocated to one product in large organizations, if it is a large selling product, you can have so many people to look after, you know, uh, as, as the owners of those products or the managers of those products. But if imagine one has to manage two, three, four, five, then it is a humongous task. But keeping that thing aside, product life cycle we have focused upon, I have just, uh, you know, highlighted those points where to bring in that product in terms of you know that life cycle situation and I would remind you of the fact that think in terms of introduction, growth, then saddle, then growth, then maturity, then uh, you know more or less decline and no product manager wants decline for their product so, so they do not preempt that but one has to take things into consideration and then rejuvenation if it is at all required. So, then comes in customer positioning. Now, positioning we have talked about and, and you see how does our customer actually perceives our product and how do we know that? Because you see we have been in touch with our customers, we have been talking to them and if we are not then it is a long exercise and then market plan should be preceded 
by an understanding of how customer perceives. We should not preconceive anything in terms of how customer thinks about us. So, we have to ask them that are you happy, are you delighted and in today's era you would have noticed that organizations they try to be in continuous touch with uh, their customers through their call centers, through mobile applications, through several kinds of interaction modes and then they keep asking about what are you feeling about the product and then they then they decipher that feeling because they are asking questions they are asking questions in terms of you know uh, many a times rating them and then uh, once you rate them so they interpret those and even they are going as far as deciphering the tone which you are using at that particular moment when you are rating them so you see customer positioning has to be analyzed and reanalyzed then there is an very important uh, you know there is a uh, uh, fundamental element to be seen always internal organizational and value chain positioning and we are talking of situation analysis you see internal means how strongly you know the employees the team members they feel about the product are they happy about it are they willing to add as you know act as sorry as uh, they are they willing to act as the ambassadors of uh, you know the uh, the product which uh, the organization is manufacturing would they be taking those products to their own home for consumption if you are talking of consumer products basically i was talking to uh, uh, you know uh, a plant head of uh, a company in consumer product segment and he was demonstrating a jaggery based product to me once you know very interesting and I said that uh, you know I, I like it I, I tasted that I like that I said that it, it feels good uh, is it healthy is it clean it, it, the processes are good he said I will show you the plant but just to tell you first that I take this product back home for my children and I feed them this product basically. No. So, you see that is the kind of strength that is the kind of positive element he carries about the product. So, and I said that how many of uh, such people are there in your organization who actually uh, you know uh, buy this product from the organization they said almost all. So, that is where internal strength lies wherein your team members are strongly oriented towards the quality the the element of the product basically value chain positioning and when you say value chain positioning are your retailers also into that basically they can they can they you know stand by the commitment which you are uh, putting up in front of the customer can they say yes I, I stand by this organization they do whatever they say this product is definitely good I have been selling this for quite some time or I have been selling this for recent years and there are no complaints and so on can this come from the retailer then your service partner you see it is a very happy moment for a customer and a manufacturer if a service partner and a, you know a service person from an organization comes and he just casually talks to the uh, you know uh, someone at home and he says I am just passing by and it is your service due uh, it is just, just a call is there any trouble in the product and he knows that you would say no. Now, that is the conviction that is the strength which the service partner carries once he comes he, he knows that apart from the changeable parts nothing has to be attended to. And then I can name Eureka Forbes on that you know water purifiers wherein uh, I have personally seen many many satisfied customers wherein their service station always calls you just to say just to remind you that your service is due and, uh, and then they formally ask you that is there any trouble they very well know uh, that you would say no there is no trouble. So, that is the you know strength of value chain positioning uh, which, which you must gain. So, what is that level which you uh, you know which, which you have at this particular moment and you see that is where current situation analysis comes in competitor positioning 
a very important element and I will be talking about this in uh, due course of time when I will be uh, you know going for competitors analysis also because after this uh, phase of our discussion I would be going for analytical part wherein not mathematical analysis per se but analysis in terms of you know uh, several elements and then I would be going for strategy part later on. So, but again you see competitor positioning how does your competition looks at you? Do they admire you? Do they accept you as leaders? They, they do not acknowledge you more or less. You are a large organization but for them you do not exist actually. How, how do you know that? You see many a times uh, your contemporary peer group in different organizations would tell you that you know we, we do not care about you. And then you are working on the same, same levels basically many a times and, and you know that joke. But again the point is why do not they acknowledge you? Because you do not have that kind of a marketing strength or you do not have that kind of a product super messy or you do not have that kind of a product planning and research and development associated with you. Why if your competition, if your competition is not acknowledging you somehow then things are not positive. You see competition should be worried of your growth basically and, and uh, you know uh, there are several uh, organizations who, who are admired by their competition. So, there are you know there are many cases of that sort and you can you can uh, work upon th those in automotive sector there are many admirable organizations like Hero Motors I can I can name Honda I can name and then consumer products uh, you know Hindustan Lever and Patanjali and then uh, you know Dabur and so many organizations you know they are admirable competitors. Then current situation is focused upon uh, this elemental analysis and how we have got there that is what are the basic reasons for us to reach here actually. So, that is what we have to focus upon. Then the next element comes in defining problems and opportunities in relation to the business wherein your product is actually contributing in your business model. So, you see for example, electrical vehicle business. Now, if an organization is new then what should they be doing in terms of market planning because they require lots of liquidity. For example, let us talk about electrical vehicle business. Now, if you look at this with the perspective of market planning a product manager and, and definitely a brand manager who is also looking at the scenario basically and I will be talking about that later on when I would be referring to the brand management part. But you see if you just focus about this because uh, a product as I told you is a contributor in a, in a business model. Now, you have to assess electrical vehicle business and the market plan associated with this product with an assessment through the eyes of the stakeholders. Prime stakeholder definitely is a customer and we have talked about you know customer also, but looking at the planning perspective with the eyes of the customer first. For example, electrical vehicle you to talk to a customer that would you like to buy electrical vehicle customer would definitely say yes I would because there would be low maintenance there would be lots of satisfaction and customer would not feel conscious about uh, you know several things we have been discussing on sustainability and you know uh, about the you know emissions and so on. Although uh, existing petrol and diesel vehicles and those vehicles they are definitely taking care of emissions and emission norms and, and you know they are they are putting up devices there and engines are being developed and so much has been done. Despite of the fact that you know uh, everything is going on but we are definitely thinking in terms of a different trajectory of uh, you know uh, automotives uh, for sustainable global development. So, you see and then you have to look at electrical vehicle business with, with uh, several key stakeholders and partners who would be contributing in the development of this uh, business and uh, direct partners definitely would be retailers or service partners and so on, but there would be n number of other kinds of partners for example, people who would be contributing in the software development related to you know collating everything in terms of this business largely. So, there are several 
you know aspects in terms of problems and opportunities direct problem which can be seen at this moment and which is which is very short lived that electrical charging stations are lesser in number every product manager is aware of that but planning they are considering the active uh, you know role which government is playing several organizations are playing in developing this you see uh, at this particular moment government of india and and several organizations along with government of india is very uh, you know proactive in bringing several enabling measures for electrical vehicles in this country in times to come so product planners and market planners first of all they are actually keeping an eye on this and that is that is a very important kind of an element now i would not spend much of your time on this but just to give you an insight and input that this you know defining problems and opportunities is a longitudinal exercise as in the case of you know uh, defining the current situation wherein reaching to the current situation is related to the longitudinal data and understanding you have about your market and the related markets as such then you go on establishing the objectives defining those very clearly because objectives are not just for you as a product manager objectives are for everyone in the value chain we have discussed uh, let's not uh, include customer here but retailers they must also you know have the same level of thinking about the, those objectives because they would be actively participating in in uh, achieving those objectives then other people in the organization actually other departments functional areas and everyone should be crystal clear on the objectives for example maruti suzuki developed brezza now everyone had a clear objective of how they would be making this vehicle successful for example a wonderful uh, project nexa and it's one of my favorites you know they they completely redesigned almost everything around that brand nexa and and everyone was was on the same plane in terms of uh, you know uh, this this exercise then comes in the fourth objective of marketing plan to define the strategies and programs necessary to achieve the objectives steps and when i say steps we have gone through those uh, you know uh, several times in past in terms of terms and concepts and you know let's say uh, what kind of a marketing mix perspective would be there uh, you would remember last time we discussed the correlation of product with other peas so steps what would be the price what would be the you know uh, retail outlets how would you reach there how customer would come there that is what what would be your communication and so on every single thing in absolute details you have to create sub chapters but that is necessary part because you have to follow that and reanalyze that because once things are not going the way you want it to you always revisit those steps and these are the only places which tell you that this is you know the place where you should be augmenting something so that is a very important element actually and for that matter if you create such a plan leave aside marketing plan for this moment you create a plan for yourself for example then you would be visiting the steps only for example you have uh, developed a career plan this is not uh, you know uh, a non marketing class uh, so any other class would also have a mention to a plan with reference to that particular functionality so that is that is the core strength of a plan wherein you revisit the steps whenever you have to to pinpoint responsibility for achieving product objectives that is team who is going to do what and what would be the synchronization of the team how harmonious would be the team how effective would would be the designing team and how effectively the design would be understood by the production how effectively the marketing team would be actually you know participating in projecting their views on whatever they have given as their input up till now how coherent they are 
as far as the complete thing goes starting from this side of customer to production and to procurement and everything everything should be synchronous i'll be coming to you know uh, many examples wherein you would find the reflection for example you have to release a product you have that product with you you have to release just release that product for a very short while under let's say a scheme or an event then also production brand manager financial uh, functionalities financial heads marketing team all of them they are interconnected very intensely because otherwise you see you would say that i require these many number of products for this kind of a period production would say sorry i can't do that because hr is not allowing me for overtime for example so that is that is again you see that is where synchronization goes and for getting this synchronization you have to bring in the top leadership on board and for bringing in top leadership on board you have to tell them that this plan is profitable as simple as that if you can't show them profits they will pat your back they will reward you and they will say you goodbye i'm not saying that they will let you out of the job basically but they would they would not accept your proposition you see ultimately they are answerable to the stockholders and all the stakeholders so they must find reason for being told to everyone that is where the strength of leadership would come in if marketing plan is strong and and i would remind you that objectives are ever evolving so so you can enumerate one or two more after this but this is the sixth from my side to encourage careful and disciplined thinking can we do that when so many people are working in organizations with the motive of rising earning definitely focusing on their jobs and in a synchronous manner and training is excellent but again can we bring them on board on every aspect of marketing plan we can there are several methods which organizations they apply for developing mental coherence of teams there are several exercises they go through there are several training uh, sessions and schedules they go through there there are there are several kind of you know sharing moments on as far as productivity and uh, you know products they go through and everyone is made a part of the complete journey all the time so there are methods of training and execution in due course of time then i should not say last but you know one of the most important objectives to establish a customer competitor orientation how do you do that there are several elements but the key element is your communication what would you tell that your customer would feel it he would start moving towards you and your competitor would also feel it and would start doing something to compete with you now that is where you know you require that kind of a message and intensity and it's it's my favorite when when i remind you of you know several tag lines you know several kinds of storyboards beautiful advertisements all around which you watch you see that is where customer orientation competitor orientation or or precisely customer orientation comes to fore and then something else from the competitor comes in and you know that that is how you you start developing thing uh, one of my favorites which is you know fevicol campaign i want you to watch that and and uh, if if you uh, you know want to go into the details of uh, you know pro- uh, this this promotion element there is a course integrated marketing communication which i uh, you know floated earlier so you can attend that but uh, you see that is where that fevicol campaign would tell you wonderfully that how a b2b product largely got itself converted into b2c and that is the beauty of marketing plan so i'll leave you here with the thoughts associated with marketing plan and market planning and i'll come back to you with lots of inputs next time till then goodbye